Good morning, everyone. It is the hour of 10, uh, Friday, March the 11th. We are here to start our jobs committee meeting. Clerk, will you please call, call the roll? Iqbal? Present. Kopi? Present. Lewis? Lewis here. Molina? Molina, present. Wallace? Here. Davis. Board. Present. Yep, All right. We want to start off by having a, a motion in a second on our um, approval of our minutes from February the 18th of this year. Who's so motion move, move. One move. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a motion by eight ball and I think a second by Molina, I believe that's what I heard. A motion by eight ball. Oh, okay. All right, any questions or comments? Seeing none, we call the roll for approval. Iqbal? Yes. Kopi? Yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Wallace? Yes. Four. Yes. All right, moving forward with our Workforce Development Division um, from the Office of Community Investments, our OCR Financial, which is attached. And I believe- Good morning. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. Within your packet, you will find the financial reporting um, for the WIOA grants through the end of January. Um, on page three of your packet is the WIOA 20 grant information. We are, in essence, in the home stretch in terms of finalizing um, the allocation. We have a little under $5,000 left um, to spend in the adult funding stream. And there's a smidge more within the dislocated worker that after averaging and projecting out the expenses, we still have about a month and a half left before we can finalize spending in that area. Um, our training percentage um, remained constant from one month to the next at 46%. It is still under the 50% 50 50 requirement. We do have until June 30th to ensure that that 50% benchmark is met. Um, a new feature that you will see in your memo is a little bit more of a detail um, information in terms of the spending for our on-the-job training projects. And for this, we owe a 20 grant. Um, for this program year alone, not for the life of this grant, but for this year alone, we have spent 34, over $34,000 for adult and dislocated on the job training projects. We have um, $21,000 that have not been paid out yet. And that's in queue, you know, we're waiting for the final paperwork so we can move that forward in payment. Um, moving on to page Four of your packet, it's the WIOA 21 grant. Um, while our main focus right now is to continue to make sure that we spend the 20 because we have to have that fully spent by June 30th, we still have to remember that we are under um, the requirement to obligate 80% of this new grant by June 30th as well. So there have been a handful of meetings between fiscal and program to ensure that we're gonna to get to that point. If you look in the middle section of your report, the obligation section, um, what was reported to the state shows that we are running very low in our obligations compared to where we should be tracking. But keep in mind that we are, un we are unable to report salary and fringe expense um, and operation expense that we know is gonna to come to fruition. We're just not able to report that out yet. That is included in the second box there under projections, obligations, accruals, and the expense. It still shows that we are running low. Um, so that's part of what 
the meetings, you know, the, the program and fiscal staff, the brainstorming have um, been involved with is how, what do we need to do to ensure that those numbers reflect that we are going to meet our benchmarks. In the WIOA 21 grant, we have reported $87,000, which equates to three projects for incumbent worker training. This, these little tidbits of detail were, um, was a request from one of our workforce development board members. So in honoring that request, I'm providing that information to you. Page five of your packet reflects the trade grant. Uh, expenses have been coming at a steady pace for that. Um, we do have until September 30th to fully spend down the allocation. Any questions? Just one, now just let everybody know why this one, uh, we, get, we have to September 30th on this one. The timing of this grant, just it, it's a different time frame. So this grant runs from um, October to September, whereas our WIOA grants run July through June. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, we move on to our uh, mid-year performance report. Uh, good morning, Chairman Ford. I have my colleague, uh, Renee Rankin, with us today to present this mid-year report. It gives you a snapshot of where we stand halfway through our program year. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me. Uh, Renee Renkin. Um, I'm the assistant director. I do oversee the delivery of the WIOA program. Um, you may recall that WIOA authorizes job training and employment services. Um, this provides direct assistance to both job seekers and the business community. Uh, the funds to support these activities are provided through the Department of Labor and they pass down to the state of Illinois. In turn, they allocate these resources to a local workforce area. Uh, King County alongside Kendall and DeKalb um, are part of this three county workforce area. Um, as part of the WIOA program, workforce areas are required to maintain one comprehensive job center. Uh, this is where federally funded education and workforce programs make their services accessible. Um, you'll find on page 43, the job seeker uh, service midpoint summary. Um, I think the earlier slide, thank you. Um, and this is for our center in Batavia. Um, universal services are provided through a contracted um, operator team. Uh, they are financially supported by 13 different agencies and organizations. Um, these services are made available Monday through Friday. Um, they can be received in person through walk-in or they can be um, offered through virtual platforms. Um, they require no eligibility criteria be satisfied. Um, and they include job searching assistance, um, resume development. There may be discussions on career paths, um, employment trends, and our operator team also makes referrals to a variety of community partners. Um, while WorkNet Batavia has seen higher numbers than last year at this time, um, I can say that in-person traffic and virtual sessions do remain lower than desired, um, but the individual interactions are very robust um, and they often include multiple interventions. Um, we have established um, outreach as a priority uh, for our operator team um, to ensure that we're reaching job seekers in need. Um, our operator right now is partnering with a variety of organizations with the library system across Kane County um, to coordinate on-site workshop delivery um, or even events that can help bring awareness and assistance um, to those in need. Um, we do expect um, for the remainder of the year that our service numbers will be consistent. Um, and those are documented midway um, on page 43. 
Um, I'd like to mention that WorkNet Batavia does have a website and a variety of social media accounts. Um, individuals are able to visit worknetbatavia.com and can sign up for our newsletter, um, can register for services um, right from home. Um, and they can also follow our social media accounts. Um, this is where we often promote um, our workshops, our job leads, and a variety of partner events. So I welcome everyone to um, follow our accounts. Uh, moving on to page 44. Um, you all may recall that WIOA authorizes a second tier of services. Um, these are based on eligibility and suitability requirements, um, but in turn, they offer um, very tailored and individualized assistance. Um, that is to unemployed, underemployed um, adults, along with disadvantaged youth. Um, these services include a readiness assessment, um, a development of an employment plan. Um, we often provide specific job search assistance, and we do um, provide occupational training um, that leads to an industry recognized credential. And this is through a particular um, training institution such as a community college or maybe a specialized training vendor. Um, so on page 44 at the top, you'll find our mid-year enrollment progress. Um, here too, the numbers for adult and dislocated worker are below what is typically recorded at this time. Um, usually we're achieving um, more, more like 75 or 80% of our goals. Um, currently, we are seeing more underemployed and low income adults as opposed to those being impacted by a layoff. Um, and this is also impacting our training progress. As you heard Maria mentioned, we are just short of our 50% benchmark. Um, but again, while the numbers are down, um, our individual customer interactions are very robust and meaningful for our clients. Um, we are trying to remedy a variety of barriers and needs that individual have that looks quite different than last year. Um, youth has largely been on track, um, aside from our work experience placements, um, which is noted at the bottom. Um, it's currently at 38% of the goal. This has been the trend during the pandemic. It has been a challenge to get our um, youth clients um, into the workplace um, to get work-based experience. Um, you, as I mentioned, we, we do provide um, occupational training. Um, WIOA does fund tuition, fees, and book expenses for job seekers. Uh, with the intent to increase their skill levels and uh, marketability. Um, while our training selections remain consistent, um, again, our enrollments are down compared to last year. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are working more intensively with individuals that often require um, sizable career exploration activities, um, job readiness remediation, and this is impacting their preparedness for training entry, um, as opposed to last year where we saw a lot of um, displaced workers that um, were ready to enter training to get that credential and get on their way. Um, because of the impacts for um, classroom training, we have expanded our on-the-job training program. Um, this is documented on the top of page 45. Um, we've contracted with a service provider, um, and this is to link our job seeker clientele with hiring employers. Um, this program provides employers, um, or eligible employers, I should say, um, with a funding award to help offset their cost to train an individual. Um, our provider, Employer and Employment Services, ENES, 
um, has placed 15 individuals using this mechanism and have awarded just under 200,000 um, in employer contracts. Um, recently, um, ENES, our provider, um, shared a placement success. Um, we had an unemployed customer that received WIOA training funds to gain an IT certification. And he was really struggling to enter that field without having experience. And he had gone through several months of trying to secure a job. And with the help of ENES, they refined his resume, they helped sharpen his interviewing skills, and he was able to land a job with Lending Solutions in Elgin. And he continued that, that training, that learning through um, our on-the-job training mechanism. So it definitely impacted his ability to continue expanding his skills um, but it also helped the employer because our award helped offset their costs to onboard and train him as an entry level IT professional. Um, so we're, we're gaining momentum with our on the job training program. Um, as you can imagine, um, you know, it is kind of an employer marketplace, they, they have to make the decision and make the offer um, and our client has to accept. So um, it is, it is a, a challenging project to administer, but um, these successes that you see here um, continue each month and um, we're in a good position um, to continue to expand the program. Um, you will also find um, on the bottom of page 45, our business program, um, which offers qualifying businesses with a reimbursement grant uh, to deliver specific job training for existing employees. Um, we have three current projects um, as part of a regional Chicagoland effort um, to support industrial maintenance apprenticeship training. Um, and, you know, we're seeing that while these projects um, did get underway earlier this year, they've all been impacted and have had delays due to business needs. Um, but we continue to promote the availability of our incumbent worker uh, training program, and we welcome any um, referrals um, from the King County community. That was a lot. Um, any questions? Any questions or comments for Renee? This is a lot to take in, but yeah. <laughs> um, nice report. Chairman Ford D Davis here with no kind words for Comcast or Xfinity in their Wi-Fi service, but um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank, 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 thank you. Um, I, I don't know if this is more appropriate, like in the in the section where you and I have comments or or now, but um, but Miss Rankin had a an example that kind of speaks to it. You know, uh, um, I never cease to be impressed by all of our partners and all the good work that goes on out there. Tons of effort going into helping people in every, you know, every way you can imagine. And it's so, I, you know, tip the hat to all of you. There's always a focus on the tech side of things, right? I mean, that's the world we live in. It's understandable and essential. But even as Renee spoke of an individual who, was you know fighting to get his IT training and then and then use it to get an IT job. She said, "Well, you know, we we went back and worked with him to help him improve his interview skills." And it sounds like he, ultimately he he got you know he did land the job and he got there. And it it just strikes me, and, and maybe these things are in there and I've just not seen it enough. But for all the technology in the world, humans are still humans. People still need to be able to deal with people. So as we're, as we're training them and as we're doing these programs, I feel like we've maybe lost a little bit of that emphasis that's still so necessary. Um, 
I don't know how many decades ago Dale Carnegie wrote his thing, you know, but it still holds true. And, if, and particularly with, with people coming up now, younger folks who maybe never had that kind of exposure, you know, the, the idea of having to deal with, with other humans face to face has become even more foreign to them, but it still matters. So as we're doing all these things, and again, I apologize if, if, if these programs are, are in there in a more prevalent way than I'm giving them credit for, but we have to help all these folks, young or old, in the middle, doesn't matter, you know, to remember how to engage personally, face-to-face or, or even on a phone conversation, but to know how to talk to people and to listen to people that will give them the ability to take all this good training they're getting and, and tech savvy behavior and, and get the job. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. <laughs> well said. Any, any, very well said. Any others? I just want to add to that. Uh, me and uh, Mr. Toth have had a conversation very similar to this where we talk about the uh, lost or the missing parts and of uh, the basic life skills that was a, a big push. I believe it came out like in the mid nineties at, at one time. Um, and, and that's something that probably if it was a part of this would have to come from a different avenue. Um, you can only put so much on, on what is needed just to get in these different positions. But um, that, that's something that, that, uh, that really need to be discussed at some point is, is a teaching and where are the life skills. And maybe it is out there, like you said, Davis, that maybe it is out there somewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. Know, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you like to know what's happening with, with that part of it. Um, just us who are of that age group that we're from day one, we were taught how to shake hands and look another person in the eye. Right. right. Things like that. So, and, and that tent goes over all of these. Doesn't matter which position you're trying for. doesn't matter how tech, you know, how, how techno it is or not. Those skills that you're referring to, Ron, apply to everyone, to yes. everything, no matter what job you're trying to do. You know, those are valuable skills to help you take the training and the education that you got and the motivation that you hopefully have and effectively use it to present yourself to the world and to other people. Yes. So congratulations on getting that young man or woman, uh, that tech job, that IT job. Yeah. That's exciting. And, right. and, yes. and there's a lot of success stories. And I get to see some of these reports through workforce development. And it may be, and, and I know that uh, Renee and Scott and Maria put on a, put a lot of time into the reports, um, but there is a lot of success stories out there and, and maybe we can hear more of it and how do you do it without personalizing it with exactly who it is. But there, 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 are, there are some amazing um, life-changing moments for people through these programs. And I, I, I like to say that this, Working at um, reports are really nice. Um, I, I get them all the time, that, um, and, and it's good to see them. And, and I enjoy looking through them. So if anyone else, I, I, you probably can go on our website, I believe. You guys helped me out with this. Um, if more people want to see more about this type of information. Anything yes, else? We, we will bring these reports to you periodically. So uh, you can look forward to future reports uh, of this nature. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, see you none. We're gonna move on to our, our resolution. Uh, this is the um, affidavit for purchase of, of um, furniture to be installed in, the, in our DeKalb Workforce Development Office. I believe that this space was being occupied at one time by Kishwaukee College. And I'm gonna leave it to Mr. Berger to explain the rest. Berger. Yes, good morning. I, we would like to draw your attention to page 46 of your agenda packet. And that's where you'll find a summary of the resolution before you today. 
As Mr. Ford just explained, uh, this resolution ratifies, just as the title says, an emergency purchase of furniture for our DeKalb Workforce Development Office. Uh, you'll recall that in addition to our Kane County office in Batavia, we do have offices in DeKalb County as well as Kendall County because we are a three county area, as Renee indicated. Uh, until very recently, um, Kishwaukee College operated our DeKalb office location. And when they ended their contractual relationship with our program uh, about a month ago, uh, they removed their furniture and equipment from the office. And so um, this created a bit of a disruption in service for our program. Uh, we can't locate our staff in the office until there are, until there's furniture, uh, you know, in office equipment, desks, chairs, et cetera, for them to use uh, under the county's purchasing ordinance. Uh, disruption in service is defined uh, to be an, an, an a constituted an emergency. So uh, what we have done is we've declared an emergency regarding the lack of furniture, and that's the basis of our um, purchase affidavit uh, to purchase furniture for the DeKalb location uh, so that we can reopen that office and uh, resume services to the DeKalb uh, County constituents. So um, I will tell you that we are working with Thomas Interiors uh, to purchase furniture at a discounted rate that they make available to units of government. So we are getting a good value for money on this purchase. Any questions? Is this a, we, we buy this, it and then we oh. are, the county buys it and we're reimbursed situation? So 100% of the cost of this purchase is paid for with federal funds uh, provided by the Department of Labor through DCEO. Let's get a motion and a second on this. Uh, Davis moves. Is there a Waller second? Second. All right. Who is that second? What's that? Wallace. Okay. Well, let's second it. Davis Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this is Wait, Alan. Wait, question or comments? Go ahead, Debbie. It's a Thank you. Um, Scott, are the, what about the technology, the computers, the phones, the laptops, the printers, et cetera? Is, did Kishwaukee take that with them too? Uh, they did have their own equipment, uh, but we have our own equipment as well. So we'll be moving our own computers and technology into the space separate from this purchase of furniture. Gotcha, thank we've you. Got that, we've got that covered. That's great, thanks. Were we surprised that they took everything? No, this was no. not a, a shock, but their departure no. was premature and much earlier than expected. Uh, we thought they would be in the office uh, and, and providing staff support through the end of this month. In actuality, they departed sort of at the end of January. So we've had to kind of move quickly and pivot Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, can we get a roll call for the vote? Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kopi? Lewis? Lewis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Wallace? Wallace, yes. Ford? Board, yes. Davis. Davis, yes. All right, moving on. Motion, the resolution has been passed. Uh, time for comments by uh, co chairs. Davis, you have anything? I, I kind of spent my. Uh, I, the, <laughs> I, 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 I pulled the trigger a little early there, yeah. <laughs> All right. That, that was a good discussion, though. And uh, at some point, we do need to talk more about that. That is a very uh, important issue. Those soft skills, really. Yes. I, mean, uh, I, I don't want to get into golf. I'm trying to hold back. But I just want to make this statement. Uh, when, when, when Aurora out at Phyllis Park developed, when it, did not develop, but, but teamed up with the First Tee program, one of the mm -hmm. basic and major parts of it was teaching life skills, the basic yep. life skills. That's a very extremely part of it. And getting the young people to understand the importance 
of uh, of what your life skills are. And adding to the basic life skills was the skills of being honest and how to uh, how to how to work with with others. And 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 it, it's such a great program for our youth. And and I know so many young people who are now in their twenties who have, who have uh, benefit from it. Moving on. Let, let's hope we can uh, let's hope we can get them out there to Settlers Hill when it opens oh, in some fashion. And yes, yes. now that there's finally a facility that will be able to host something like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, moving on. Uh, I believe it's going to be next month. We'll have a roundtable discussion. Yes. And I'll let Chris talk more about that. Um, just to bring to the table also. I heard a statistic some time ago. I have not been able to find it in writing or, or a recording of it anywhere in, in, in any form or fashion. About in the year 2025, they're talking about 25 million IT jobs out in the country. So therefore, um, we've been talking, I've even talked with, to Roger about this, about having a, another roundtable discussion on, on just IT and bring in the uh, public uh, to, to sit around and see where that's at and where it's going and what people are out there doing. Yeah, good. Um, moving on, um, we're gonna go down to our uh, uh, committee reports. So we have um, our uh, revision of our uh, county code 24812 for the jobs committee. And I believe that um, we've had some submissions from, from others on this. I think Lewis, she submitted something. Oh, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I did. I, I just wanted to go through, um, I updated uh, our recommendations from last month um, with the recommendations given to last uh, last month's jobs committee meeting from all the board members, which again, I wanted to thank everyone for their input. It was a great uh, amount of change. So I just wanted to go through that real fast um, because we're still in the process of a lot, uh, being able to update it and make changes. So this is by no means the final, this is just updated from last month. So this committee will provide guidance to the county board on all matters pertaining to job retention and creation in, in Kane County. Its objective will be to maintain and increase employment in Kane County and to promote the creation of more jobs that pay higher and liberal wages, especially in the private economy. Committee leadership and membership will work with current employers to learn how the county can protect existing jobs and demonstrate our appreciation for employers' efforts, as well as create opportunities to expand the goals of employers. Efforts will be made to focus attention and community resources on the employment of veterans and underserved populations. This committee shall have jurisdiction over the Workforce Development Division of the Kane County Office of Community Investment. And then I did, um, per recommendation of last month, I did omit the final part that said this committee shall have two co-chairpersons, each of whom shall be members of the executive committee. So if anyone has any further additions or anything else they'd like to change, um, please let me know. I believe that... Um, um, Debbie Allen brought up something at the last meeting about how that was created. So I, I think we need, just need to make sure we look into that. They had something to do with funding from, I don't know if it was state or federal. Debbie, you still there? I am still here. I think what I said was that we figured, we hoped we'd be getting a federal and state money coming into the county. And that's the reason why we, um, aimed at having a Republican chairman and a Democrat chairman so that we would have all bases covered. I don't know if that's still appropriate, but I, it, it made sense at the time, I thought. Open for discussion. Any this other discussion? Go ahead. <laughs> this is Molina. I just wanted to say, uh, Chris, great job. Um, this, this looks great, I think. Um, you took everybody's um, kind of perspective into it and it, it, it's concise. It kind of tells exactly what the jobs committee um, wants, uh, wants to do. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Or comment? 
Go ahead. Yes, uh, I don't have that uh, uh, description in the in the packet. So, is it possible to get one? Absolutely, I can email a copy of this out to the committee after the meeting. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Lewis, I think it looks great too. Um, much more concise. Um, and yeah, if we could all have one more month to look at it. Um, this is part of the bigger policy that's coming through. Um, and I and we have one or even two months till we actually get this submitted into the bigger one. So, um, but I, I think it's almost perfect. All right. Yeah, I think the day is still a uh, review. So we're not voting on it today. And I'm glad that we're far enough ahead of where we're supposed to be at till we've had the second review. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I would I would like to make a comment. Um, committee leadership and membership will work with current employers and other county board committees. Okay. To learn how the county process is sharpened pencil out. Because I would love to see our committee working with your committee with uh, all this siege of money coming down. Yes, yes. And you, you said other board committees is the language? Other county board committees. Yep. No problem. No problem. I can add that in. Okay. We've got to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Any other uh, questions and comments? <laughs> All right. Seeing none. We're going to move on to our, um, see if we have an update on the Kane County Economic Development Initiative. Thank you very much. Today is a, a little bit more brief um, than normal due to the distance or the, the length of time since our last meeting. Um, I'm just going to jump right on into it. Um, there we go. Oddly enough, the unemployment data for Kane in Illinois hasn't been updated yet. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Um, we're probably going to be hovering around the same, and we're not going to see any effects of some of the current problems we're having with our economy to affect the unemployment rate. Um, but I, I did want to highlight this now. Um, Rick Nagel put this together uh, yesterday in Kane County Connects, and he just put a great article together about the gas prices in Kane County. Um, it's just something that probably in the next coming months, I'm gonna to put together a few more notes on just to really give out the information of how that could potentially affect our workforce um, at different levels in terms of employment, um, our employers, um, gas prices go up. I mean, we can only assume the negative, but I don't wanna to speak to that without some more information. So I just wanted to give everyone kind of something to look forward to um, because I was, I. Um, I was pretty spot on with my accurate prediction of where inflation was going. It's at 7.87%. This is from January's numbers. So this doesn't include any of our um, recent event, world events affecting our gas prices. I did, I did read that every time the barrel of gas goes up $10, that adds another two tenths of percent of inflation. And I, I've heard predictions from anywhere from 160 to 185, they expect a, a barrel of gas to be by the end of this year, which How is, oh, that's a lot. That's, that's, that would probably put us in the six to $7 a gallon range. Um, and you know, here in King County, we're higher than the national average. So just something again, just to keep an eye on because this is, this is gonna start seeping into our, our workforce and affect that. Um, it's been such a, an abrupt change. I mean, gas went up a dollar in I think two weeks, two or three weeks. And I, it's been 20 something years since I've seen some sort of effect. So I'd really like to have some quantifiable data so we can just talk realistically about what that means for our workers. But um, it's just something to keep an eye on. And then, sorry. And then for, um, as Ron said, yep, we're, lo we're looking to move our economic Devel development roundtable luncheon to April 22nd because of the holiday next month, jobs committee will be on the 22nd, which is about six weeks from away from now. So, um, you know, I'm trying to get you Urvda, to join, but if not, one of the things Ron and I have been talking about are IT jobs. Um, I've read, I did a stat about two years ago. They said by 2050, about 70% of the jobs that'll exist haven't been named creative or thought of yet. 
but I do know that IT is probably going to be a core component for a lot of jobs. It's not going to be um, just a skill set. It's going to be part of a skill set that's needed, like having soft skills. I think IT is just going to be our, our, our future workforce is going to have to know how to code, have to understand a lot about the internal uh, workings of technology a lot better than I think we do, because it's going to be integrated into even more of the workforce that they have. Um, and I like to keep the potential topics for following months alive because um, I've had some really great comments from both the jobs committee members and uh, our other committee board members who have been attending jobs committee meetings. So thank you. Um, if you if we ever have a topic that is coming up that you know a speaker or have a business that could contribute, um, please let me know so I can reach out to them. Uh, I really want to continue to have the community get engaged with what we're doing here at jobs committee because we're really taking some good steps. Um, the one thing I did add from last month is it's something that's coming up more and more now is the problem with part-time employment versus full-time employment. And the businesses that re require part-time employees are having a harder time now finding part-time employees because even though they've increased their wages, not having enough um, hours for people really precludes them from employment. Um, and there's also some underlying issues with benefits and requirements that goes along with it. But that's something that needs to be discussed because that's going to be another change as we move into um, the, the increase in wage for the, the minimum wage in Illinois over the next few years and how employers are reacting that to, to um, higher. Um, also, and for those who don't know, I would just like to share that um, in May, I'm expecting my second child. So uh, if you if you know if you need something from me, I'm SS now. Just you know, give me a little bit of heads up because I will be taking care. I'm really excited to share that news with everyone because another Kane County resident will be joining us. <laughs> so um, so this is some great news. But I again I just am really I've been really appreciative of the comments I've had from board members uh, in the in the past month just about what's been going on with jobs committee. Um, and I really value everyone's input, both in the meetings and outside of it. So just thank you. We'll, we'll try to keep in mind the sleep deprivation that's coming your way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it takes six years for a new parent to recover from sleep from the birth of a child. That's what they're telling me. Six years. So And, and then grandkids come yeah. later on. It starts over again. Yeah. It's my copy. Can't get any bigger. <laughs> any I didn't other? know there was a point where you did recover. <laughs> any any questions or comments? Oh, and congratulations. Congrats for us. Thank you. Uh, do we have a, what time do we normally start these round tables? I know we call it, it's, it's a luncheon. Yeah, typically we, we go from 11 to one o'clock. Okay, um, so it'd be kind of immediately following. Yeah, we, we staggered it um, just in case. We'll stagger it just in case jobs committee goes over or if anything. But we have typically 11 to 1 is what um, the economic development professionals usually can allow time for. Okay. Mimosas this year, Mr. Ford? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We, we, had, we, we may be downstairs, so Moses may not be a part of this one. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Any any new business? I think we kind of already kind of covered that. Uh, I'm not aware of it. Are there any public comments out there? Uh, can I get a motion to second put our reports on file? So moved by Davis. Wallace second. All a second. I, uh, I guess we do a roll call on this. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kopi? Lewis? Lewis, yes. Paulina? Paulina, yes. Wallace? Yes. Ford? Ford, yes. Davis? Davis, yes. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry, I did have one more comment I wanted to make before the meeting was over, if that's all right. Go right ahead. Um, I just wanted to also highlight our partners at the Valley Industrial Association have recently opened a job posting board for manufacturers on their board. Um, it's for members and non-members. And right now they're at 61 postings for manufacturing jobs 
um, in, in the region. So I just want to make sure that I highlighted that and that we're, we'll be sharing that information out because it's just another opportunity for uh, our local residents to find gainful employment in the manufacturing sector. Thank you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I believe there's no need for executive session. Can I get a motion a second yes. to adjourn? So moved, Wallace. Wallace, move. Can you have a second? Do you have a second? All in favor by saying aye. 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 Old same aye. sign for whatever reason. <laughs>